Well, with FDR's decision to let MacArthur and King go through the Central and South Pacific, virtually all the big military strategy decisions had been made. The rest was up to the commanders in the field. There were only two major decisions left to be made, and unexpectedly, Roosevelt would not be the one to make them. On the afternoon of April 12th, 1945, Vice President Harry Truman thought he would be playing poker with his buddies that night. Instead, he found himself standing in front of Chief Justice Harlan Stone and being sworn in as the 33rd President of the United States. When Roosevelt died in April 1945, Harry Truman came into office with very little idea about what was going on. FDR had this personal style of leadership. He didn't keep lots of notes. It was a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations for him, and FDR trusted his cabinet secretaries with very little and his vice presidents with even less. Fortunately for Truman, there were really only two decisions he had to make. Now, Germany was defeated and would surrender in less than a month. Japan was on its last legs, so the only thing Truman needed to decide was whether to invade Japan or whether to drop the atomic bomb. Well, Truman took office knowing virtually nothing about the A-bomb, and it was up to Henry Stimson, the 74-year-old Secretary of War, to tell him about this new revolutionary weapon. Stimson had managed the development of the bomb, the Manhattan Project, they called it, and he was concerned as a former Secretary of State more with figuring out how we use the atomic bomb to preserve the peace of future generations rather than simply use it to end the war now or to vaporize a couple of Japanese cities. After talking it over with the Joint Chiefs and Stimson, Truman decided to try the bomb out to end the war. And once the first atomic bomb test in New Mexico proved that the weapon would work, Truman gave Japan an ultimatum, unconditional surrender or prompt and utter destruction. Stimson suggested adding something in to tell the Japanese that if they kept the emperor on his throne, that would be enough unconditional surrender. We could, we could still accept it with that condition. But that was not added to the ultimatum. Japan never replied to Truman's demand, and on August 6th and 9th, 1945, two more Japanese cities were turned to ashes. Now, interestingly, Nagasaki, that was, of course, the second city to be hit, was not originally supposed to be the second city on our target list. Now, that honor belonged to the city of Kyoto. But Secretary Stimson had toured Kyoto uh, before the war. He knew a lot about the, uh, the old Shinto shrines and the castles of great historical and cultural significance there. And Stimson believed the world would look down on the United States if it destroyed so much of Japan's heritage. So he insisted on using a different city. That's why, after a few changes of plan, ultimately Nagasaki swallowed the second pill.